So what is forking? Forking is just a uh, way to copy from other someone else's repository to your account. So this is your account, right? And you have your own Mad1 project here. So let's say you're not working on Mad1 project right now. You're working on some other, you want to think of it something else. So uh, let's say you go to someone else's repository, as a GitHub account, and you find some uh, like interesting repository, right? So you go to the repository and you're like, okay, I want to know what uh, this repository is or what it does. So you can see, okay, it is for creating presentations. So, okay, maybe I want to check out how it is. So, okay, I can read the readme file and all, but then uh, I can't understand how the code works. So I can obviously open the code here directly, but then it's hard for me to, let's say, make some changes to see how it's working. So what then we can do is we can fork this. So if I click on fork, it will now automatically create a copy of the same repository in my account, which is the IITM register one. So it, usually it is kept as the same name, but you can also change the name here. So let's keep it the same name just for now. And the description is basically the same, and then we copy the master branch and we create a fork. So now you can see in my account, I have this repository present, which is actually forked from this original repository. So right now these are exactly copy of each other, but then obviously I cannot make any changes to this repository, right? So if someone has created this repository of their own code, no, randomly someone else cannot come and change their code, right? So what the maximum they can do is because everything is open and available to see, they can simply create a copy of it in their account. So in my account, now I have this repository and now I can make any changes. So if I want, I can go and change something here directly from GitHub, but obviously there's a better way to do this, which is we now clone this into our local system. So then comes the part of cloning. Cloning is basically, so once you've forked someone else's repository into your GitHub account, now simply just taking it into a local system is called cloning. So it's the copying of repository from GitHub to your system. So we have already seen issues. So yeah, let's see how to do the cloning. So right now I'm in the Madman project. So let's say I get tired working on the Madman project and I just come out of it and I want to work on some other project. So right now I only have this Madman project, but as we say, as we know, we have cloned this uh, present so let me just go to clone uh, the code here and as we know we have the ssh keys right so we don't want the https or github cli we'll go to the ssh and we'll copy this so that is the link of the repository and just like we ha have done git uh, remote add origin and then a link so that was when we created the repository locally first and then we pushed it now here it's the opposite so the repository exists in my github and not in my system so here we will do the git clone so basically they're the same as each other but then a different thing so when you have created the files in your system first and then want to push it you do git repo origin add and when you want to uh, copy something from the github into your system you do git clone so git clone and then the name of the uh, like the link of the repository and it will automatically clone that into your system so as you can see it's cloning into the present so the name is automatically taken from this but then if you want some other name you can let's say type uh, present two or something like that so it will clone into that folder so let's not do that so right now you can see i have the present folder and if i go into there like you can see there is a dot git here also which contains all the git details so here now i have all the files which were there here so we'll not get into code obviously but then uh, let's say i want to tinker around and see what happens so obviously because i have the entire code i can compile it i can execute it all that is fine and uh, let's say i open the readme and I make some changes so let's say I change this to a capital A and then I save it so now if you do git status you can see that I have changed this readme.md file so let us just add it so git add readme.md and now we can do git commit and we can say capitalized or capitalize the first letter of a sentence and readme so you can see the color here started to change, right? So till here it's yellow and here now it's white. So that is basically your editor's way of telling you that, okay, your title is getting too long. Title cannot be so long. You maybe put the rest of it in the description instead. So let me change it to, change it to A at start of my name. So now it's small enough and maybe I can add some extra details here. The second line of readme started with a small letter which is A, change that to capital A. So basically some simple uh, message of the commit. And I can save it now, and now the commit is done. So if I do the status, you can see 
uh, the tree is clean and if I look at log you can see that my origin is here but my local system is one commit further so we'll simply do get push origin master and it will push all the changes not to the original repo because I don't have access to that but to my copy of the repo so now if you do reload you can see that my uh, my accounts commit of change it may is now added to this copy of the repository and github will also tell you okay now your uh, copy of this repository is actually not same as the original anymore your copy is now ahead so you have one more commit on the repository than the original so what you can do is basically you can see what are the changes and if you want to now let's say so there are two ways or two reasons for you to clone something so one is let's say okay this guy created the repository but then I want to make some changes and use the software for myself so in that case you will just make the changes and keep on using but let's say you want to actually contribute to his repository you are like okay there was an error obviously I cannot access your code directly so I copied it I fixed some error so now it starts with a capital A and now I want you to incorporate my changes in your repository <coughs> so that is done by creating a pull request so when you click here this will basically tell that okay from your account you want to push this changes to the actual repository right so and what you can do is you can see what changes you have made is basically just one character change and you can create a pull request and you can say okay this is what i've changed you can add more details also and you can create a pull request so once this is done github will also check if there is some conflict basically if let's say you change something and someone else also change something right so in that case uh, github doesn't know whose code is correct or who, whose code to keep but here no one else was working on the code it was only you and you made some change so uh, the change was simply one line change and now you want to push it so now you have created a pull request you can see it's one and it's open so you have proposed these changes now the maintainer of this repository the owner uh, has to come and see if it's correct or not and then he can uh, either merge your pull request or close it so now you can see if let's say i logged into the original owner of that repository so now they will get a notification in their inbox that okay someone has done something to your repository so we can open this and we can see that okay so this is a pull request and we said basically the same message we can read like okay so this is what you have done and now we can go to the files changed and we can review the changes that okay it's basically just in the readme just one character is changed from the first letter from small a to the capital a so we can let's say add some comments also so let's say nice catch thanks and then so this is just a comment and we don't want to do any review and now we can go to the conversations and we can see that okay so whatever i added here now the other person is also able to see that i made some comment here and then finally because i'm happy with all the changes i can now merge pull request so if there was let's say he was doing some malicious thing and he was maybe deleting some code or changing some code which will cause some errors i can just close the pull request but because now this is a genuine pull request i will merge the pull request so now you can see the uh, pull request is now merged and basically no longer open so now in my original repository the actual uh, like the a has changed from small to capital so the changes are now reflected into the actual repository and if you go to the commit history now your name will be part of the official commit history of that repository so that is how usually you could do open source contributions so we've already seen what issues are so and we have also seen what pull requests are so pull requests are basically a way for you to after you've made some changes to some fork of some repository you can then request the owner of the repository that see that I have made some changes. Uh, do you maybe want to incorporate this in your actual code repository? And then it can obviously be reviewed by others. And then finally, if it's correct, then it can be merged into the original repository. So learning Git, Git is a very vast topic. And you can never learn it in like one day or one month. Even learning Git is a lifelong process. But then to familiarize yourself with the basics of Git, you can first of all do some actual projects so maybe create your madman project in a repository and just keep on like making changes and do git add git commit git push so it will give you the muscle memory and you'll start to understand okay how it's working another way to understand git and git branching and all you is you can go to this website learn git branching.js.org and this has multiple levels so this is basically teaching git by interactive playing games so you can see there are multiple challenges you have to do introduction branching merging so you can just start doing these and let's say you can start doing one two etc so i'll not show you how to do this i will simply let's say so this is level one but then you can also go into a sandbox mode where uh, there's no 
objectives you can just see how it works. So I can let's say so this is I can simply say git commit. So I can create a new commit. So obviously this is not how you actually work with git, but this is a simplified version just for learning. So instead of git add and then git commit with a message, I can just type git commit and it is uh, putting some new commits. So that is basically how git works and how the branches works. So you can go to this website and learn how git works using that. So you can go to levels again from the sandbox and you can choose each level and read what you have to do and play the games. Finally, I'll, I'll leave with a few resources. So obviously this is just a beginner's tutorial, but then if you want to dive more into depth, you can read the GitHub guides, which is made officially by GitHub. Uh, this is the same link as the previous slide and then there are two YouTube videos also. So if you learn better by watching tutorials instead of reading guides, you can refer to these also. One is in English by a foreigner and one is in English by an Indian. So what's next? So in the next videos, we'll talk about mergers. So we slightly glanced over it in the pull request part, but then we'll see it in details. And we'll also see get ignored. So this is something very important for this project, Mad1 and Mad2 project itself. So there will be some files you don't want to add to your GitHub or your Git uh, tracking, but then you want them to be present in your folder. So how you manage uh, things which are not tracked by Git, that will be done in getting now. So that's it for this video.